Console informatique, réservoir ou encore système de rétraction, voici ce à quoi ressemble la cabine d'un avion pendant sa phase de test. Et c'est à bord du 787-9 que Jason Fox, mécanicien en vol chez Boeing, lève le voile sur les différents équipements abrités par le Dreamliner lors des essais. Des instruments de mesure indispensables, tout commence avec les consoles informatiques. This is a wrap. One of these will be to monitor engines. Another one might be communications, another one might be a recording, video recording rack. Um, that you can see they're all manned with engineers. Almost, almost every flight has an engineer manning their station to record data, um, manipulate the recording so that Boeing can use it later to build the airplane better and fix anything that might be wrong. And these rack, all these racks are reusable. We'll take them off this airplane when they're done and we'll put them on the next uh, test airplane. So they'll go on the Dash 10, they might go on a 747, they might go on the 777X, but we'll, we'll unbolt them and we'll reconfigure them for what we need them for and then we'll put them on an entirely different platform. A lot of these racks have been used for many years on a lot of historical programs and they still work. Poursuite de la visite avec ces imposants bidons disposés un peu partout dans l'appareil. Vito, ils sont équipés de load banks, autrement dit des résistances chauffantes. Explication. These are our flight test water barrels and we use them to store water on the aircraft to manipulate and transfer front to back to simulate different uh, configurations in the aircraft that will be used in service, passenger configurations, cargo configurations, and also to put the aircraft in a condition of maximum envelope so that we can test it and uh, see how it performs and what it does. So each one of these water barrels Uh, is controlled by a computer laptop in the back that you can transfer water in between each one of them or from the front of the aircraft to the rear of the aircraft. Another interesting feature of these water barrels are these two devices right here which are they're called load banks but they're basically just big heating coils that get red hot and they use electricity on the aircraft to simulate the loads that a passenger aircraft would experience in flight like uh, in-flight entertainment, um, all the various systems that go into an airplane that has pass revenue passengers on board. So they'll turn these heaters on and the water keeps the heat cool and uh, allows them to dump electricity to load up the generators on the engines and uh, test them to see what they do. And they do this in every, every climate imaginable from the deserts in California to tropical climates in Hawaii, uh, even up in Alaska and anywhere they can find super cold temperatures, Iceland for example. Tout autant d'appareils commandés et dirigés par les équipes d'essai en vol de Boeing qui révèlent des informations capitales à l'avionneur. So this is a, um, you know, this is where a lot of our flight test engineers sit back here and they monitor data during flight. So they can look at the, the strip charts that are being printed out and uh, they can take notes against the strip charts and they're constantly in communication with the pilots up front so they can tell the pilots that the data looks good or that hey maybe the data didn't look so great so if you could please repeat that condition and do it again because we didn't see something that we liked or we want to see something again so so yeah usually this area is full six seats here so so everybody's looking at something different Situé au fond de l'appareil, le système de rétraction permet d'étudier l'écoulement aérodynamique produit à l'arrière du Dreamliner. What we have here is a trailing cone winch and what it is is we can take a hose, a really long hose and roll it up here. And then what we can do is extend it out through the top, out through the airplane up through the vertical fin of the airplane through the leading edge out through the back of the airplane and extend this hose about 250 feet off of the back of the airplane in flight. And the idea is, is that we're able to take um, air data information 250 feet of the way from the airplane so we can get the right pressure of the air um, without the airplane affecting it. So we can take this data and compare it to our air data system on board the airplane and we use it for test for calibration purposes. So it's a really great way to get um, the actual um, air pressure at a certain altitude where the airplane doesn't affect the movement of the air. So, yeah. C'est avec ce quatrième et dernier épisode, le plus technique, que s'achève notre analyse détaillée de ce que signifie 
constituer et requiert la phase d'essai en vol des appareils qui aujourd'hui sillonnent le ciel.